Yo, what's up? Oh, today, today I've got a rant video for you today, and that is the dangers of woman friendships. All right, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Kane. I'm the Silver Bachelor. This channel is 100% dedicated to dating advice for older guys. If you're new, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification button because I'm dropping a video every day. All right, the dangers of woman friendships. So, I decided to do this video because of a conversation that I had last night with a female friend. Before I get into that, I will say, I'm generally not a fan of having female friends. I will go into some of the reasons why in this video and why you should consider these things as uh, dangers, warning signs, whatever. Okay, so I decided to expand my friend circle to incorporate women. Over the last basically six months, I've had some good experiences. I've had some not so good experiences and mostly it hasn't been good experiences. All right. So it, I'm generalizing here, but women, as we all know, as men are a lot more emotional than men are. So it makes it a lot more difficult to have candid conversations with women friends and I'll have some very specifics today. So one of the things that is very hard to have conversations about is facts. Okay. <laughs> you know, you're thinking what facts are facts. Studies show certain facts. Yes. The way they collect that data sometimes is questionable, but I'm very, very analytical as a person. I'm a marketing executive and I'm very focused on KPIs and the analytics behind the things that I do. YouTube, there's algorithms and all these things, right? So it's the same thing with, we need to be aware of facts. So last night I go out for dinner or excuse me, go out for some drinks. Um, just quick side note, right? I get this text and it says, Hey, do you want to join me for a drink? Now, the good thing about the women friends that I have is that we tend to go back and forth. So they will pay for a drink or meal. I'll pay for a drink or meal. So it's not like I'm always paying. So that's awesome. So here we are. Um, she asked me to join her for a drink. I go join her for a drink. And when I see her, she's very, she looks really good. Lots of makeup. She's dressed nice. Right. And I'm thinking, did she, did she dress up like that for me? And then, of course, what happens a few minutes in, I find out she had a date that canceled on her a couple hours earlier. So clearly, I'm not offended by it, but this is just what goes on with women typically. When they ask you out female friends, it's usually, it's, it's a calculated move. It's because, oh, I dressed up. I want somewhere to go because I spent a lot of time getting dressed up and preparing my makeup my plans went fell through. So let me get together with this guy or let me get together with this guy because he's going to cover my drinks or my food. That's not my case, but that also happens, right? In general, women are very calculated with the things they do and the stuff that, uh, they contact a male friend about. All right. So back to this, the situation. So, so the evening, is going well and she starts asking me about my dating experience and I start throwing out some facts out there facts hard facts okay so for example 70% of divorces are filed by the woman 90% of that 70% are filed by women with a college degree bachelor's degree or higher all right that's nuts some other facts Five years into a marriage, the woman's desire for her husband drops off a cliff, whereas the husband's desire declines steadily. Studies can't point to a specific reason why their desire drops. Obviously, we know women are hypergamous. It's to women's advantage to have multiple men from a dating, from a, a biological uh, procreation standpoint, right? It, it's like built into their DNA. So I start discussing this with her and saying, like, look, after five years, and then she's like, well, what about this? And what about that? Whatever. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. There's no specific reason. There's just the difference between the desire drops and the other one doesn't. 
The other thing that I talked about was weddings, okay? Here's the sad truth. Guys, the more you spend on that wedding, if you're not married right now and you're thinking of getting married or you're thinking of a second married, marriage and you, you're thinking, oh, I want to make her happy. Well, studies have shown, this is, you, you can research this. Studies have shown the more you spend on the wedding, the shorter the marriage, right? So I have a true story for you on the opposite side. So I was married before 20 years. And at that time, I was in my 20s, and both her and I were broke. So 20 years because we didn't spend much in the wedding. However, here's the catch. So we were both broke, and she didn't want to have a prolonged engagement. Like many times, people are engaged for two years because they're saving up for this big wedding, right? So in my case, I proposed, and we got married two months later. She wasn't pregnant. I don't have any children, so... That wasn't the reason. So we, I thought I was doing a good thing and she would be proud of this and happy. So we get married two months later after the engagement. And she, at the time she's like, look, let's just get married. I don't need any fancy dress. I don't need this or this or whatever. So she borrows a dress from a friend. I buy her a smaller ring, not thousands of dollars, a very modest smaller ring. We even rented a wedding cake. At the, t at the time of the wedding, we took pictures with the knives and the fake cake. Then we removed the, the fake cake, took it in the back, had a Costco slab of cake or slabs, cut those, and then served that cake to the, the people at the reception. So all that being said, to my shock, three, four years into the marriage, out of the blue, she says to me that she wished and she feel, she regrets going on the cheap and not having her own wedding dress, not having a better ring, et cetera, et cetera. Like, guys, my heart was broken. My heart sank. You guys are probably thinking I probably should have left the marriage at that time. I didn't because I felt I made a commitment and I still was in love with her. So this, what happens is, you know, fast forward, we end up getting a divorce, but this is the thing is like, <laughs> it's like, you can't do any right. Us guys can't do any right with these women. So back to women friendships, when you're talking about facts, right? And like last night, for example, she started arguing with me and she started getting upset. And I'm like, why are you getting upset? These are just facts. She's like, well, you know, all this and this and this, and it started to make that time that I was with her a little uncomfortable because I'm just trying to have a conversation and she's asking me about my dating experience, but it didn't end there. Right? So, and this is why I wanted to do the, this video because I was like, Oh shit, these are the dangers of having women friends. So you can't discuss facts mostly with women because they just have all these opinions and they bring their emotions into it when it's like clear facts. For example, fact, more men do risky jobs. That's a fact. For example, only 5% of women are on oil rigs. Only 5% of women are firefighters. Only 12% of women are police officers. Only 12% of women are, uh, what was the other one? Oh, um, are in the army. Women in general do not want to do the dangerous jobs, but the dangerous jobs pay way more. I live in Atlanta. There is construction all over on, on my left side, all over here. I see crane operators. I see guys hanging from buildings, cleaning windows. I see men, the construction workers. They deserve because of the danger of that work, they deserve two, three, four times the wage, the hourly wage that someone else would get as a barista, as an office worker, whatever, because it's dangerous. But you can't have these conversations with women because they get upset and they go, well, they make all this. And that's the difference between men and women. A guy, you can have these conversations with them and they're like, Okay, mm, I didn't realize about those facts. So something else, and this, is, this was really, really the driver of why I wanted to do this video. 
So I'm, I asked her, I said, hey, look, you're on Bumble. And she says, yes. And I said, show me your Bumble profile. I'll do the same. Go through your selection process because I'm curious and I'll do the same on my side. So she's like, okay, cool. So she goes through and she's like, oh, this guy's around my height left. Oh, uh, this guy, uh, I don't like his sweater left. So she's going on and on left, 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 right. She found a couple guys that seem good. And she's like, oh, he doesn't speak multiple languages left. And that's just dating apps. So then it's my turn. This was fascinating to me. It's my turn, right? I go and I see a profile and I'm like, oh, single mother left. Oh, she doesn't have any pictures of her body. So she's hiding something and she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to show what she actually looks like left. Oh, she's overweight. I could tell by her face left. And she starts getting mad at me. I'm like, what? She's like, well, you're being so superficial. <laughs> like, guys, seriously, I flip the tables on her. I'm like, hold on a second, superficial. And yet you swipe left on guys around your height. Only five, 15 percent of men are over six feet tall. And you talking about superficial men can't change their height. Women can change their body weight. So I'm making my choices based on their physical attributes. And I can see that they're lazy. I'm sorry, women that are watching you're overweight and you're like quite overweight. The reason why you're overweight is because you're lazy. You're not making the, the right choices on your food and you're not going to the gym. And that's the same with you guys. If you guys are overweight, you're lazy as well. You're not making the right choices with your food and you're not going to the gym. And I'm just calling a spade a spade. And you know what? The people that are subscribed to my channel and watch my videos, they appreciate my candor being frank about these things. It's true. I'm not sugarcoating anything. So she's getting upset with me. The double standards are off the charts. I, I'm like, I'm shocked. I'm like, well, hold on a second. You're upset with me because I'm choosing profiles where they're not overweight. I need to see their body and I um, don't want to date a woman with children ultimately because I don't have any children. And, she, and then I threw it back in her court and I'm like, wait a minute, but you're, you're superficial with choosing men that can't help it. They're your height, but that's not good enough. Or they don't speak multiple languages. That's not good enough. And on and on and on. And it's like, <laughs> I was, I was really, really trying hard not to, not to get all flank flared up about this. And so that's the date. These are some of the dangers guys. When you have women friends is that you can't have candid, frank conversations with them because they start to get upset. Like you show them your dating app and how you choose women yet. It's okay for them to dis dis discard men the way they do, but it's not okay for men to do the same. So then I start talking to her about like, look, she's like, well, why, why do you have to make such quick decisions at, in terms of swiping left or right? And I'm like, because I don't want to waste my time. And she's like, yeah, but you're not giving them a chance. I'm like, okay, but why would I settle? Here's the other thing I said to her. I know what percentage of men I fall into in terms of my income. Okay. I am not in my twenties anymore. I'm five, seven in height. I lose some points there because of my age, because of my height, but my income levels all that up. Plus, obviously, if I take care of that, I get and gain some points as well. So I know I'm very aware of my marketplace sexual value, right? I don't have to settle. And I telling her this, I don't have to settle for the bottom 50% of women when I know I can go out with, to say it like this, sevens, eights, or nines. So she starts getting started really getting upset with me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, look, so this is the problem guys. When you have women friends, you can't be yourself with them. You can't be fully honest. And it's not just her. It's other women friends that I have. And I've had these conversations and they start getting upset. Whereas with other dudes, you can totally be yourself and go like this, this, and this. And they're like, yeah, man. And so, that's why I wanted to share this video. And you know, the other thing is, man, is that women 
when they want to go out with you, it's a very calculated move mostly. It's because, like I said, their, their plans got canceled. They're looking for somebody to cover their meal or cover their drinks. And in a sense, women use men in a friendship situation mostly. There's exceptions. I do have a few, few female friends where I know that's not the case. But last night was kind of an eye-opener about how you really can't be yourself and be brutally honest with these women. Um, they will take offense to it. They don't like they don't like to feel like anyone's marginalized, even though you're like, yeah, well, you marginalize men by choosing men that are less than six feet tall, as an example. Or so <laughs> I'll leave you with this last thing, man. Okay, guys, guys only want two things from women. Two things. Right? And we, even and women can't get this right mostly. One, we want women to look good physically. And two, we want them to be nice to us. That's it. Be nice to us, be respectful, be feminine, whatever. So look good and be nice. That's it. And most women can't even get those two things right. That's my problem. When, especially on from a dating app standpoint, I'm like, seriously, girl, you don't take care of yourself. You don't go to the gym. And this is really, it becomes really bad after 30, at the age of 35. And I'm sorry for the women watching this, but that's true. After the age of 35, most are overweight. And that's the one, the number one thing guys are looking for is like, I want a woman that looks good physically. Whereas on the opposite side, women want a man that's tall, that makes six figures, that's alpha, but not too alpha, a man that has masculine frame, that has good style, on and on and on. So that's I'm I know this video is a bit of a rant, but I was a little flared up from last night, okay? I just wanted to make a point that these are the dangers of having female friends. You do whatever you want to do, but I wanted to share these things with you in my experience because it is super challenging. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you next time.